I am Denise, Denise Salum Barroso. I have been, uh, I am from uh, another place in Brazil called Minas Gerais, but I live in Sao Paulo, where is the, the economical heart of the country. And I have been, I have been a teacher for, I have been a teacher since 1992. So it's been 32 years, um, uh, which I have taught different students. Uh, firstly, I started teaching privately, so private lessons, then in, comp in company, so teaching to secretaries, uh, managers, so business English. And then uh, uh, in 2000, I started teaching a language school, teaching various levels from kids to adults, from very young learners to advanced English. And uh, in 2019, I moved to this school where I have been teaching. Now it's a regular school where I teach kids uh, fourth graders. Uh, Hello, waiting Nancy. for your questions. Hello. Good morning, Nancy. Good morning. You are, but uh, Pajam. Uh, how can I? How can I pronounce your name? Padmaja. Padmaja. I love that. Here, I would like to ask you a question. Can I ask, ma'am? Of course. I'm here. Could you I'm please here for tell that. us about your activities with British Council? How does British Council help teachers to stay updated? Well, uh, British Council is one of the institutions, Padmaja, that I I use to update myself. So British Council usually offers uh, lots of webinars and conferences. Uh, they have an amazing platform for students and for teachers for their development with very uh, with very interesting courses given by great names in our area in the pedagogical area linguistic pronunciation grammar vocabulary and uh, uh, from time from time to time I take these courses because they are really well prepared. Uh, they are very serious. They uh, and I uh, and by the way, this week, this afternoon, I'm taking a course from Cambridge, which is another great institution. And in the middle of this week, I'm also taking another taking part in another webinar from British Council. And do you know that British Council? There is a place there that you students you can do lots of activities. Thank you. My name is Nand Kishu. Nand Kishu. Okay, nice to here meet my, you. Here my question is: You have been an incredibly creative teacher. You always try to acquire new things in the field of English language teaching. Could you please share your journey of learning to remain relevant in this teaching profession? Uh, well, uh, so let me see where I'm going to. So uh, as I was telling Pajmanja, one of the the places that I, I usually use to keep updated is British Council, but there are, uh, but there are others uh, like Cambridge, Macmillan, and I attend every year, I attend conferences uh, in different parts of Brazil. There is an institution here called Brustiso. Uh, it's from the big institution Tiso. And I, I usually take part in it every year because I can meet the other professionals. I can learn from them. I hear, I take notes. I'm a very curious person. So I'm curious about people, about learners, about other professionals. So I, in these conferences, I try to, to keep in touch with them, to talk to them, take notes. I take notes of everything I see, I hear, I read. 
So I think that keeping these rec uh, these records, keeping these notes, uh, I have lots and lots of notebooks, small notebooks where I I rely on them to to remind the things that I had learned and to implement in my classes. So I'm never happy with my classes. So I always try to bring something new. How I can be different, be, especially because people are different. Students are different. Generations are different. As I have been a teacher for more than 30 years. So uh, the world has changed and people have changed. Kids nowadays are very different from the kids uh, used to be 10 years ago. So that's why I think the importance of keeping learning, keeping being updated. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Then is how much time you spend on learning every day? Every day? Well, it starts, uh, I commute to work and it takes me an hour on train and subway and walking. So while I'm on the subway and walk, uh, subway and the train, I am always, wait a minute, this is my bag that I take in the train and there is always my, a book and uh, pens mm. and uh, uh, stick notes, for notes that I, so I am, oh, I, and I go standing, there is no place to sit. Mm. But uh, I completely ignore everything around me. And the train is packed of people, but I keep it here. Oh. Mm. I read, I take notes. And so uh, it starts in the morning. And then, okay, I teach. I teach from, in Brazil, local time, from 8 to 4. Then I go back, and I go back studying again. And when I come home, I I make dinner, uh, prepare my lessons, and then I I take another an hour or so to continue studying. And it's not only English, as I said. I I love other things. I love philosophy. I love philosophy, anthropology, and I'm taking an anthropology course. So I, everything related to people that I can I think I can uh, contribute more. I try to study and implement in my in my daily lessons. Yes. Hello, Denise. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. How how can I pronounce your name? Nitika. I would like to ask you a question. Can I ask, ma'am? Yeah, okay. Please go ahead. How do you integrate reading into other subject areas to create a more holistic learning experience? Well. Uh, let me, let me, um, you see, I think as I was telling Hadi, I love reading and I try to, uh, and when I have, uh, for example, a reading, a reading text for students. So, uh, first of all, I think that, uh, I try to get pictures from that reading passage uh, pictures, um, the the title, the heading. So asking the students uh, to uh, how they can how they can predict what they what do they know about that thing only from the pictures or from the title because I believe that everybody knows something. So how they I can I start really. Um, uh, how can I say that? I start really um, um, bringing them into the reading text before reading it actually. After, uh, and I make some, and, and I prepare some questions in order to really engage them in the reading. After reading, I see how they can, how they can, uh, uh, how they can use their knowledge to say the the new pieces of information they learned from that reading, and I promote discussion pair work. It's not uh, it's not from me but from them. So how they can in pairs in trios discuss discuss a text discuss about that text, and connect to other things in their lives. And I will give an example. 
uh, my students, they are 10 years old. They're very young. And they were reading, there was a text about a, a boy who, and it is a true story. He, he is from, he is from a small country, but he is studying in a boarding school uh, in England. And he went there to, to, uh, to improve his ballet, uh, ballet skills. So before giving them that text, I I engaged them in the in the topic by showing them a snippet, a part of a film called uh, Billy Elliot. In this film, Billy is a boy. He is also he loves dancing, uh, but he he has no money to go to a ballet institution, and showing I showed them. Is small snippets of, from this film is showing all his journey towards the, the the day of the audition and that he was accepted and he got the scholarship. So they were so engaged, they loved so much that story that when they read the text, uh, it was easy for them to to visual uh, to understand the idea to get the keywords, and after that it was over to them. So what would would be their dreams uh, in learning, in improving some talent, some of their skills? And what would they what what would be possible to do to reach this goal? So I think that uh, it's beyond language, it's beyond vocabulary, beyond beyond grammar, when we really involve students in topics and showing them, so how they can connect their lives somehow to that topic they are reading. Hello, Denise. Hello. Hello, how are you? I am fine. How are you, Denise? I'm fine too. I'm very fine and very happy to be here with you. My name is Farhat Tabsum. I am studying 8th grade from JKJ School of Elevaram. Here I would like to ask a question. Can I ask, ma'am? Please, go ahead. How innovatively do you teach English to your students? Please share your effective strategies. Well, um, I, I have I, I have lots of strategies. One of them, for, for example, through reading was this one that I have uh, just, um, just described. Another one, uh, for I, I think that uh, kids, teenagers so we human beings we love we are people who love who love moving so we are not static we don't like keeping sit and sit still for longer times so and i try to use this movement this natural movement especially from kids uh, to teach voc even vocabulary or grammar for example Recently, I was trying to help my students to learn how to make questions in English, the, the ordering questions. So an example, uh, what time, uh, especially when I'm talking about someone else. So what time does Hari have breakfast? What time does uh, your friend go to school? And to teach this order in the question, I, I used mimics. So mimics in for each for show, showing them first the example. For example, uh, I did this. They would come with uh, what time? Then uh, I I pointed to Hari, for example, and they say ah what time Hari? But they needed to include this. So then I say okay what time Hari? And they need to come with this. Uh, and then the and then the mimics of, for example, this go to bed, uh, eating breakfast, take a shower. So um, I gave them this example first. Then I got the students; they were back to the board, and here, oh, behind them, I wrote a sentence, and all the class needed to make mimics so that. So that student needed to construct the sentence. After constructing it, da -da -da, the sentence was there. It was right, good. 
I uh, I asked uh, someone to ask that question about that student that we were pointing, for example, what time does Hari go to bed? And, and if somebody said, ah, I asked the other person to say um, a false sentence, Hari goes to bed at nine o'clock. I would ask that person, is that true or false? If the person said, no, it's false, Okay, how can I transform this in a negative? So it was a construction. I have never went to the front of the class. Say, okay, guys, let's start the present. Let's start the question. So it was all also a construction. They were learning. They were constructing the sentence, the affirmative, the interrogative, the negative. So vocabulary was involved and it was especially involved because it was about them. It was not about uh, an exercise in the book. Oh, the exercise in the book is the last one given in the class. So they they leave what they're learning. So this is, uh, I believe in really doing. I learn from doing and that I try to bring this into class. This is one of my strategies. Okay. Hello. Hello, Denise. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, what about you? I'm fine too. Hello, Denise, my name is Mamata, an eighth grader from JPH School, Alavaram. I would, I would like to ask you a question, can I ask? Please go ahead. Here, my question is, what strategies do you find most effective in improving students' reading comprehension? Uh, this is uh, uh, one of them I have read told. So about bringing, bringing, I think that activating their schemata, their knowledge, their previous knowledge. So uh, I love using the snippets of films, uh, some songs, uh, of course, that to do that, it involves a lot of planning. So it depends on the reading I'm bringing. Uh, okay, how, uh, as I think that music is something that can involve everyone, films, and so, as, and so films. So I try to bring snippets of films, parts of songs uh, that are related to that topic. Uh, another another part sometimes um, to deconstruct the text in parts and uh, the student would need to to find okay you have one paragraph your friend has another paragraph someone else has another paragraph how would you uh, put this text in the correct order and then I would ask okay this is the order that your group found but tell me the evidences, how have you done that? Why do you think this is the order? Uh, another thing, sometimes I cover, if I want to deal with the vocabulary, sometimes I, I cover some keywords from the text and, and then I replace by a picture or I replace by a definition and they would, they would need to Come, come up with that word that it was covered. Um, or uh, the text says an example. The text is about, um, I don't know, um, uh, a, a very simple example. Okay, Mahatma Gandhi um, was, born, uh, was born in England, an example. Uh, I, I would change some pieces of information and they would need to come with the correct piece of information saying, uh, okay, that's false, but why is that false? And uh, I depend on the text and the length of the text, if it's longer, I try to, I also like to bring some research that they would research to connect to the text they're reading. So, uh, the, it depends on the text I'm giving, depends on the, the level of difficulty. I bring different strategies. I think that it's not only... Okay, what is the age of retirement in Brazil? 
especially for the public school teachers? Uh, well, it used to be, it used to be, uh, if the teacher started, well, people from my generation, it used to be 55 years old, but there, but there were some movements and some changes and nowadays 60 and now they increased for women 62 and for men 65 and uh, you know because of the uh there are less people born and people are living longer so the the government says that they cannot support these uh, so and people are healthier now so but um people i have friends uh, i am 57 but i have friends who retired when they were 50 50 55 but the the value of their retirement was is not that good so i haven't i haven't retired yet because i i opted to uh, wait a little bit longer in order to get a better value. Okay. Before I wind up the session, uh, I request both of you to give a message to my students. Students, uh, One, Dennis, start. Okay. So, first of all, it was, again, a great pleasure seeing you all guys talking to you. Uh, and my message is, so I truly believe in education so because reading saved me uh saved my life i come from a very um un uh, underprivileged backgrounds i was extremely poor but i think that uh, i was gifted by the the will uh, the, this love, this passion for reading, for studying. So study and read. Be curious about people. Be curious about the world. So this will take you very far. So to have a really rich life in knowledge. Yes. I, though we are friends, <laughs> but she's uh, my guru. So now it is my guru's <laughs> turn to give a message to my students. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, Denise said about going far, so I think you can go far with your teacher, Hare Krishna. He's already taken you around the world <laughs> to yeah. many different places. And uh, so keep on that track. And um, learning, learning a language is not just about learning the actual words, the grammar, the vocabulary, but understanding the cultural parts of every country. So um, just bear that in mind when you're talking to people around the world, you know, what, what kind of differences do you see? What kind of uh, cultural things you see and take them all on board and uh, learn from that as well. You know, how, how different people see the world. It's very important. And keep on reading as Denise said and talking to people. 